Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. My name is Beta and this is The Simple Budget. Here on my channel, I show you how my family is using the zero-based budgeting method in order to get out of debt and simplify our financial life. If that sounds like content that you're interested in, I would love it if you would hit the subscribe button and join our little crew here. And with that being said, let's get into today's video. Happy Friday to you. Um, I hope that your week has been a good one so far, and I hope that you are enjoying all of the extra bonus content that has been coming your way this week as well. Um, if you've missed it, on Tuesday, I posted a mini budget with me for my side income, which um, for this week just included my first week of Etsy pay for the month of April. And then yesterday, I posted a very exciting um, debt update. So if you haven't um, checked those out, definitely do if you have some free time. Um, but today's video is just part of my normal content, and that is the weekly check-in. And if you happen to be new to my channel or new to cash budgeting and cash stuffing and zero-based budgeting and all the rest of it, basically what this is, is we reconcile the last week of non-cash purchases. So for a great many, the way that my husband and I cho choose to do it, um, I would say probably about 50% of our categories are, mm, actually no, I'm going to go ahead and say maybe 30% of our budget categories are not cash stuffed. We just leave that money in the bank. Um, that's like our mortgage, our bills and expenses, those sorts of things. And then for the other 70% uh, we cash stuff. And because we live in a world where it is nearly impossible, I think at this point to just do 100% cash. Um, we, any, um, expenses that we make that are either with our debit card or online, we have to return the money that's in our cash envelopes back to the bank. Um, I am doing a little bit of a departure from my normal, um, well, not a departure from, I'm still going to go through the expense tracking. I will probably have a VEDA story or 17 in there. Um, but then what I've decided to do also at the end of the video, I'm going to kind of um, walk you guys through what I do with the cash once the camera goes off. Um, I get a lot of questions on my channel like, do you actually take that money back to the bank? Um and deposit it back in your account and all of that. And I used to, I used to take the money back to the bank every Wednesday religiously um, because since we were so new and I was new to disciplining myself financially, uh, I was too nervous to miss that step. I didn't want there to be any hiccups in the road as far as like maybe accidentally overdrawing the account or something like that. Now what I do is repurpose the cash um, into my next cash stuffing. So I'm going to actually show you guys how I do that at the end of this video. I'm just going to do like a talk overlay um, over top of like the silent, a silent recorded video just so that you can see the process. But I'll actually like verbally walk you through uh, what I'm doing on camera. So um, I like to try to be as helpful as I possibly can because I know that the system can be confusing. And I know that when a system is confusing to somebody, it's sometimes enough of a reason to make you not want to try it. And we have found um, just such immense success and um, peace in budgeting this way. And I don't want anybody to be deterred because they don't understand a process. And I would certainly hate if somebody didn't understand a process because I made it confusing. So I like to try to walk through as much information as clearly as I possibly can, because what I want for all of us is financial peace and freedom. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the expense tracking. So I'm going to just scooch my coffee, my sweet cold brew, because bless it, we are having an 80 degree day today in the northern part of Texas. Oh, God bless Texas. Let me tell you something. I do love our spring and summer here. I know that some people are just not made for the heat. I do not mind when it gets to 100 and 110 degrees. I love it when it's 90. I love it. Um, I'm just a weirdo like that. So, 
Um, anyways, um, this budget planner is available in my Etsy shop. I have it as a printable option and a digital download so that you can go ahead and upload it in a notes app in your tablet. I love this guy. Um, it definitely, you know, was created in my brain for the way that we budget, but so many of you have also, um, been benefited by it. And I'm so happy whenever you guys are happy with your purchases from my Etsy shop. That's really important to me. I'm also actually, since we're going to be talking Etsy shop stuff, I've also decided, um, I'm going to start creating some digital downloads for meal planning and grocery shopping. So, um, be on the lookout for those things. I'm thinking actually even about offering in my shop, um, like a, a notepad that's like a skinny long one that's like a grocery list, but it's magnetized so that you can put it on your refrigerator so that you can jot things down throughout the week. So um, if that's something that you're interested in, let me know. Um, I'm shopping around right now for products and um, suppliers and stuff, but um, that's kind of like on my brain because obviously like if you've been around my channel for any significant period of time, you know that our gro our grocery budget is a topic of conversation around here. And, um, you know, meal planning and being able to stay on track with that sort of stuff is like sort of, I think at this point, at this st stage in the where, where we are in the world and time and all of those things, like keeping your, your food budget on track is really <laughs> the, the, the bread and butter, if you will, of being able to keep the rest of your budget on track. So anyways, um, I'm going to just go ahead and open up actually to, I'm going to have to grab out some of March and April. That's just, oh, that's June. Um, because, you know, I mean, that's just what we're dealing with here. We're at the end of March. We're reconciling those purchases and the beginning of April, those purchases. Um, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yes. Okay. I was like, I know that I have, obviously we can see that I had, I don't know. We just, I feel like we have a lot of expenses to go over today. So buckle in and grab yourself a snack because I feel like it's just going to be one of those days. Um, and I need to grab like a little piece of just blank paper so that I can sort of block out all of this, what I feel like is chaos on the page. So you know how I like to do. Also, I don't know why I only grabbed two pieces of paper, but well, maybe this will be enough. Anyways, I think I've rambled long enough. I'm going to go ahead and zoom you guys in and then we can get into the actual expense tracking. So now that I have you guys zoomed in, we will go over late March's expenses and then we'll move into April, but um, nothing particularly exciting on this page. I do have an Amazon purchase. Um, I had to purchase some more shipping supplies and for the life of me, for the life of me, cannot remember um, what it was specifically that I purchased, but somewhere in the neighborhood of shipping supplies. The total was $40.24. I'm returning $41 back to the bank. If you do happen to be new here, all we do here is we round up to the to the next dollar. And then this change builds up and serves as our bu like a buffer, an extra buffer or a miscellaneous um, expense, you know, buffer in our checking account. My husband tracks every penny that comes into and goes out of our household. Um, and so this change is tracked and every now and then we will pull from it. Like I said, for like a miscellaneous expense or mostly just if we want to round down a dollar in one of these expenses down here. And you'll see that as we go along too. So we call it our virtual coin jar because um, we have a physical coin jar in the house for a change from our cash purchases. But the virtual coin jar just is money that stays in our checking account. So anyways, next up, this was like, this was so fun. I went out for dinner with some of my old coworkers from my last job. Um, and including my manager, who is now my, my manager at my new job, but she was my manager at my old job, if you do happen to be new here. We went to a restaurant called Firebirds, which was super fun because um, I've been to a Firebirds before back on the East Coast. Um, it's, I mean, obviously it's a chain, but I think their quality of food is actually pretty decent. Um, and they had a good wine list actually. So I had a glass of wine, which I kind of avoid lately um, just because... Um, alcohol and my body do not seem to enjoy one another, one another's company. And sure enough, from one glass of wine, I woke up inflamed the next day, but it's fine. It was one glass of wine. It was delicious with dinner. And I had just a really great time with, with my ladies there. So, uh, the total for my portion of the meal was $44 and 63 cents. I'll be returning $45 to the bank. 
Um, next up, <laughs> because I mentioned Mr. Simple took you guys' advice, um, he purchased um, like a blower attachment for like our lawnmower weed whacker system. And um, it's coming from home maintenance. He also purchased something else, but I can't remember. It was also home maintenance related. So the total purchase was $111.03. And I'll be returning $111 to the bank. Uh, next up, I went to, again, the place that has captured my heart. It's called Fossil Creek Tree Farm. I've mentioned it before. If you're on the Fort Worth side of the DFW area, um, definitely pop in and give them a visit. It's a small business. Um, it's family owned. And it's a beautiful plant nursery. So if you are in need of some plants and things, um, definitely, you know, pop in. But they have a, a sweet little, like, I don't want to call it a gift shop because it's almost insulting. It's like a home goods store that's, like, attached to um, the, what's it called? The, the whole, like, the whole property. Um, and I went in there because, um, why do I have a household item on there? I don't remember. Oh, I went in there because they had a candle in stock. I'm not sure if they still do, but it's called Texas Blue Bonnets. And if you are even remotely close to Texas, you know about Blue Bonnet season. It's absolutely breathtaking. The wildflowers in Texas are unbelievable. Um, and I think the Blue Bonnet is the Texas state flower. I'm not 100% sure, but anyway, they had a candle that smelled like it. And I was like, oh my gosh, this smells so good. And so I bought one each for my mom and my sister um, because they're going to be coming here at the end of May. And I was like, oh, it'd be fun to have like a little gift bag for each of them and like including some things that I really love in the area. And so um, the Texas Blue Bonnet candle was definitely one of those things. And then I'm trying to remember what household item I picked up from there. Can't remember. What in the world did I buy from there? Nope. It is, it eludes me. I really am sitting here trying to thank you guys. Anyway, it was $26.58 and I'm returning $27 to the bank. What did I get? I'm so irritated because it's like, I, I usually only go in there with a purpose. So it's not like I would forget what I purchased from there, but I really am forgetting what I purchased from there. Anyways, shoot, I am, I am just, I'm plumb out of explanations for that one. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's move on to the next page here. I think you guys can still see. Yes, I am going to block out the rest of this just because it's, it's too much. It's too much. Um, we ran out of milk on this date, March 31st. So Mr. Simple ran to 7-Eleven to just grab a little half gallon of milk. Half gallon of milk is $3.89. That's absolutely insane. And it's not even good milk. It's not even good milk. Anyways. That's coming from our grocery budget, and we're returning $4 to the bank for that one. Um, I have a series of Amazon purchases coming up just because I, I did need to replenish uh, quite a few things in my, um, what you call it, in my shop. So I was I just needed like materials and all that sort of stuff. And so that's what this was. On the first, um, I think I needed some more vellum. No, maybe, oh, do you know what? I needed some more um, laminating sheets, matte laminating sheets for my envelope. So it was $50.38 and I'm returning $51 to the bank. Um, next up, um, I have a PayPal purchase for $3.16. This is coming from mine and I can't remember why. It was something little, obviously $3.16. I don't know. Anyway, Mr. when we were going over this, Mr. Simple was like, just take $3 back to the bank because I'm a benevolent dictator. And I was like, oh, that's so cute. So that's what I'm doing for that one. Um, this one, oh, this is a fun story. This isn't even a beta story. It's really a Mr. Simple story. But um, he, his bows, he wears, I have AirPods because they fit my ear just fine, but AirPods do not fit into Mr. Simple ear, Mr. Simple's ears properly. And so he has the Bose version of like AirPods, like the wireless, you know, headphones. Um, but he went to pair them the other day with his phone and they just weren't working anymore. So he ordered himself a new pair, which was so exciting for him. Um, one, because he was like, you know, he was just talking about the freedom of, you know, being able to use his spending money for something like this. And before he just, 
he would have never spent money on himself because, you know, he just felt like it detracted from like our family budget as a whole and those sorts of things. But now that he has got his own designated spending money, it was like the freedom of being able to purchase that was something that he was really happy about. Um, and he purchased them from this website called Shop My Exchange. If you are a veteran, go check out this website, especially if you have an expensive thing to purchase, because it's basically like the exchange on, I almost said campus, not campus, on base. Oh my gosh, I could not think of what those were called. Um, but so it's tax free. Um, and so he was able to get these Bose headphones for $269, um, which was, it's a great price for them. He pulled $250 out of our uh, high yield savings account to fund most of this purchase. And I'll be returning $19 back to the bank for this one. Um, but yeah, so anyways, if you're a veteran, shop my exchange and you will get lots of goodies tax-free. So it's good stuff. Um, next up, Amazon equipment. What is that? $18.39. Oh, I know what it is. I needed a um, a surge protector in my office to just be able to plug all the things in, like my printer, my laptop, um, and my, what are they called? My laminators. We are getting the office set up. It's not film ready yet, but it is functional for me, which is absolutely amazing. I still film here in our dining room because I like the light in here better. Um, but oh my gosh, the office space is functioning for me right now. And I am so beyond excited to have this space that works for both of us. It's wonderful. It's so, so wonderful. So anyways, um, next up, let me tell you guys, this week was a real struggle with groceries. And I was even saying to Mr. Simple, like when I came home, I know that you guys know for like the last few weeks, I have like... I have tapped out every penny. I have used every cent of our grocery budget. And this week I went over budget way. I mean, it was just, it was so ridiculous. And I said to him, I'm like, I'm not even buying anything. Like I'm not, I'm not even buying anything. Like one of our meals, the crux of it, I already still like for this from this grocery shopping trip, I still had the meat in the freezer left over from the week before. So I'm like, I don't even know what I spent money on. And I mean, it's like, you know, Mr. Simple was watching me unpack and put the put away the groceries. And he's like, you literally didn't buy anything outside of the norm. And I'm like, no, I know. I have no idea like where this money goes. It's absolutely insane to me. So I know, like I don't have any grocery money left to return to the uh, bank. So I'm going to have to play with our grocery budget for the rest of the month in order to figure out how to like split up this grocery money that I still owe us basically. But I mean, I know that everybody in the comments has also been talking about, they're like, yes, it's absolutely insane. Inflation is so real. And the way that it's impacting your grocery budget is bothering you too. But I was especially irritated after this week because I was like, I lit, like I didn't buy anything. I mean, obviously I bought enough food to feed our family for a week, but it's just like, I'm not buying anything excessive. We don't eat junk food. We don't, I don't buy ice cream. We, the only snacks that we keep in our pantry are the snacks that our kids take to school on a daily basis. So it's not like I'm buying things that are like outside of what is necessary to feed us for every meal for every day. I mean, honestly and truly. So I, it's beyond frustrating to me right now. Um, and I'm also taking it really hard because I have some other like background stuff that makes me feel a particular type of way about groceries. Like I've mentioned to you guys before about how like this brings up a lot of like negative feelings and memories from the COVID lockdowns because it would be like entire weeks where you couldn't find like eggs and toilet paper or paper towels or just like things and those aren't paper towels aren't groceries but you know what I'm saying like it would be like just like you know basic things that that you couldn't get or you couldn't find a lot of um because of you know the way that it impacted our supply chains and all of that sort of stuff so um but even that like my oldest difficulty with grocery shopping memories go beyond that even. So it's just like, it's, 
it's like bringing up all of that nonsense and I hate it so, so much. Anyways, I'm so sorry to go off on a tangent because it's like I'm also being vague because to explain to you all of why I have this like repressed grocery shopping anxiety is it would be like its own video. But um, needless to say, going over groceries this week really upset me. So anyways, I will move along from that because it's like, yeah, right. You, you and all the rest of us beta, you know what I mean? So anyways, um, next up was another Amazon purchase. The total for this one was $85 and 98 cents. And this one was broken down into multiple categories. And so this is how I do that. Um, I always put the total for the purchase here, just so that when we're reconciling the um, the checking account, like it's like, okay, this is actually what the purchase was. But then for my own like administrative pur purposes, I need to know the breakdown of each of the expenses within that purchase so that I know what money to pull from to return to the bank. So first up was some stuff for the office, like getting it organized and set up and stuff. And so the total for that was $44 and I'll be returning $44 to the bank. Um, next up were more shipping supplies. So it was $18.98 and I'll be taking $19 back to the bank. Uh, then we had some another equipment purchase and that was $23 and I'll be taking $23 back to the bank. So lots of stuff for like my office and my shop this week, just trying to get everything organized now that like I have the space at my disposal to be able to do things with. So um, just getting all of that set up has been um, fun, but also like necessary. So anyways, um, this is a, a PayPal purchase. This is coming from my um, my account. And okay, you guys, you can't laugh, okay? I mean, some of you are probably going to. Um, but there's this game that I play on my phone. Don't laugh and don't judge me. <laughs> um, it's like a gardening game. It's so cute. So you get to like, you'll have like these little daily challenges and like, you have like, you get like four challenges a day that you have to like build this garden. And, you know, you kind of accrue different um um, different plants and outdoor furniture pieces and stuff to make your garden look really pretty. Anyways, um, they offer this thing like once a month where you like buy into the, I don't even know what, like you just like, you buy like a pass to get like the more designs you do, then the more rewards you'll get is essentially what it is. And so I was like, oh, why the heck not? Like I'll do it. Cause I have a lot of fun playing this game. Anyways, I know it's frivolous, but it's my money, so I'm going to spend it however I want. If you guys are interested in the game, I'll leave the link for it below so that you can sign up for it. Um, full disclosure, if you sign up, I will get like little bonus points in the game. Um, but I don't know. It's just like a fun little pa pastime. It's like, a, it's like a fun decompression activity for me um, after either um, a regular work day at my regular job or just like a long, busy day like doing stuff for my shop, so... Anyways, uh, $5.29, and I'm going to be taking $5 back to the bank because Mr. Simple pulled this $0.29 cents from our virtual coin jar. Um, next up was, it was more grocery. So I refilled my Starbucks card for $20 and purchased my coffee grounds so that I could make my cold brew. Um, if you guys never caught my uh, how to make cold brew video, I'll go ahead and leave it linked for you right now. Um, so yeah, so that's coming from grocery, uh, just another part of the grocery overage that irritated my soul. So anyways, <laughs> um, another Amazon purchase for 1514. What was this? Household. Oh, oh, I purchased just some like microfiber dusting cloths. Um, I got neutral colored ones because I am me. So I was excited. Like I just typed that in there. I was like neutral dusting cloths and they, these pulled up. So I was really, really nerdy, excited to find them. So not that it matters. Nobody's going to see them, but I will have them and I will know that I am enjoying them. So anyways, that's what that was. Um, and then Mr. Simple was, um, starving like Marvin yesterday when he was yesterday, I think yesterday. Well, not your yesterday, my yesterday. Um, and so he was, I guess, driving home from work or he knew he wasn't going to make it home in like a reasonable time to grab some lunch. So he grabbed some lunch at Chick-fil-A. So the total for that was $13.35 and he, I'll be returning $13 back to the bank. We did used to have a work food category, but we decided to pull that. And we basically said like, if you're going to 
spend money on um, food or coffee or whatever while you're working, that's going to be your own expense because we certainly have enough money or I'm sorry, we have enough food in the house that you shouldn't need to get food out while you're at work. Um, and so if you make that choice, it's going to come from your own personal spending. So we enacted that policy, I think like last month. So it's relatively new, but we don't do it very often. So, you know, it's going to happen from time to time. Uh, next up was my weekly target purchase. The total was $102 and 55 cents. And we've got quite a few categories for this one. So, oh, oh, this is the last purchase. I'll just move this. So grocery was $68.55. I'll return $69 to the bank. Um, household was $5. I'll return $5 to the bank. I just purchased um, some dishwashing sponges that I use. I, we needed new ones. Um, Parte was uh, $14. This is a category of our budget where we either like are going to host some people who come over or um, like for our kids' birthday parties. And this is a friend's reference. If you've um, never heard me say, you're like, why are you saying parte? Um, it's how Ross said it in an episode of Friends. And I find that Ross is quite a uh, divisive character in the show Friends, but I love him. So, I mean, I would never marry or date him because he's Ross. But like, you know, I think he's a comedic element that is absolutely necessary in the show. And... Some people really don't feel that way. Anyways, I'm returning $14 to the bank for that. And then we had a little clothing purchase. It was just for my daughter. It was $15 and I'm returning $15 to the bank. So now that we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and zoom you guys back out and we will get to unstuffing the envelopes from these cash expense or from these non-cash expenses. So um, what I always do first is add up the total of all of the expenses for the week so that I know roughly how much money I should have sitting here oh, in my cash tray, which can't really be seen right now, um, at the end of all of the unstuffing. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom you guys through me adding all of this up, and then we will actually get to the unstuffing portion itself. So here we go. Alrighty, so our baseline that we're starting with is $637. Now, I know that I'm not going to have all of that at the end of this because, um, like, obviously the grocery purchase is, or the grocery purchases um, will not be included in this final number. Um, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I'll just show you kind of how I deal with that as I come to it. So let's just start here. Um, Actually, you know, we have a lot to pull from my business binder. So I think I'm just going to hop in there first because um, I think we should be able to make a decent amount of change as well. Um, here we go. <clears throat> yeah, I need to be able to see all of it. So let me see. We've got, let's, we'll just start with shipping supplies. So 41 plus. 19 and it looks like that's it so that's 68 dollars i'm gonna start here we go oh man i just scooched my paper so i just oh no not 68 60 right 41 yeah 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 41 and 19 that would be 60 dollars from shipping supplies and <laughs> whoops Okay, so I don't actually have the money in here, so I might not be able to start with my business binder. So I'm gonna can that. <laughs> this just happens sometimes, guys. Um, let me pop in and see, well, hers, how maintenance. You know what, let's just start in high priority sinking funds, like I always do. So home maintenance is in here. I'm pretty sure we only have the one, 111. Yes. Okay. So here we go. Home maintenance. There we go. Whoa. Oh, and I have exact change. 110 and 11. Oops. 
And then remaining in home maintenance, I have um, 20, 40, 60, 70, 80, 95, 105 in home maintenance. So put that there, 105 and a check mark. And then household is also in high priority sinking funds. So let me just make sure that no, we have more than one. So we've got 27 from here and then 15 and five, right? Yes, so that would be $47. Twenty forty five forty six forty seven. 40, 6, and 47. 20, 45, 46, 47. Can always count on household to have all the change that we needed to have. So remaining in household, I have 10, 20, 5, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. 37 remaining in household. Oops, there we go. Oh, that would be an upside down pen. $37. I'm just gonna move that, it's getting on my nerves. <laughs> household, draw a line through there. Okay, there's that last one. Okay, and then no, I just, I saw the grocery purchases, so we're going to have to deal with that now, and I will figure out how I'm going to amend groceries for the rest of the month. So, four plus 35 plus 20 plus 69, that is brutal, $128. So, I'm going to not, I'm going to have to put minus 128 because I am missing all of that grocery money. And um, I'm gonna have to like reconcile that later. Usually what I do is subtract from like the rest of the month, but um, I'm gonna have to see how this plays out. We do have a couple of weeks where we will need a few less groceries than usual. Um, but I, I don't know if it's gonna be like you know, $64 worth spread out over like two weeks or whatever. So we'll see. Um, that might be a possibility, but I don't know. This was, I mean, I could just keep going on and on about this, you guys. So <laughs> I'm just so frustrated by it. So anyways, um, I will just move along here to another high priority. Let's see. Equipment, hers, grocery, household. Grocery household purchase. Close. Close is in high priority. And that will be the last one. I'm pulling $15 from that. Um, all right. I'll have to take 20 out and bring back a five. All right. So remaining in close, we have 50, 60, 70, 85, 86, 87, and 88. All right, so I'm gonna um, that that's gonna do it for our low or our high priority sinking funds. I'm gonna move along to low priority sinking funds, which are over here. <laughs> um, let's see, hers. I have a couple of things. So 45. Let me just add this up. 45 plus three. Up. Oh, hold on. Plus five, that's 53. Whoops, okay, there we go. Let me see, oh, I have exact change. So 50 and then one, two, three. And then remaining in my spending, I have 50, 70, 90, 110, 115, 25, 30, one, two, three, four, and five. So 135 remaining in my spending. Here we go. 
five, put a check mark, cross that out, put a check mark, and then cross that out and put a check mark. Whoops. All right. And then his, I thought we had two. Yeah, so he's got 19 plus, where was it? 13. $32 from his, oh, there, um, 20, 30, two, and actually he doesn't have a thousand in his, in our high yield savings anymore because he pulled 250 from it, but I'll fix that off camera, um, but in, in his envelope here, he's got 50, 70, 90, 100, 5, and 6. So 106 plus, what is that? I guess 750. So it's 856. You guys will let me know if my math was wrong, <laughs> was wrong right? <laughs> 856. And if I got that right, look at me adding and things, even though, you know. At a baseline, I don't really count very well, so. <laughs> and I don't math very well. I can count just fine, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. We are moving right along here into house project. So house project, we are pulling $44. That's at the back here. Um, oh, good, okay, so 20, 40, one, two, three, and four. There we go. Okay, for a second I thought that was five, and I was like, wait a second, no. Um, okay, so remaining in house project, we have one, two, three, 54, uh, 10, 20, 30, one, and two. So 432 remaining in house project. Mm, where'd that go? There. 432, give that a check mark. And then I think, oh no, we've got some holiday sinking funds too. So I'll just go ahead and pull from those. Okay. And we've got gifts in here up first and we're pulling 40 from that. Oh, perfect. I just have a bunch of tens. There we go. And remaining in gifts, we have 106. Number six, give that a check mark. And then where is I? Parte, $14 from there. Yeah. Oh, what's that one? Oh. So 10 and a five and pull a one back. All right, so remaining in parte, I have 10, 20, 30, 41. in my table make it difficult sometimes okay oh I didn't put a check mark there um I think that oh no I forgot to put a check mark there too I'm pretty sure that we just have my business binder left yeah like materials equipment shipping supplies but now at least I'll be able to make some change so that's good news um oh I moved it off to the side okay let's jump in here shall we we definitely have Plenty of change now, which you guys can't see, but trust me, I mean, this is what my cash tray looks like right now. So we've got lots of change. Um, so let's just start with shipping supplies again. I can't remember what it was. So 41 plus 19 plus, that's it. So $60 from shipping supplies. Five sixty. Oh, that's right. So we will just put a fifty and a twenty and pull a ten back, 
And now in shipping supplies, I have 20, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So 37 remaining in shipping supplies. And I actually should be good for those for a while. <clears throat> There we go, 37 remaining and cross this one off too. Okay, so then I think that's gonna do it for this page. So now I can just concentrate all of my efforts over here. So next up is materials. Materials, however, is empty. And the reason for that is because I have not done my Etsy and YouTube cash stuffing for the month of um, March yet. So what I'm gonna do is just deduct um, f what is this? $51. Yeah. I'm just going to deduct $51 from what I have to stuff in it, which is totally fine. This money is actually sitting in my checking account waiting to be stuffed. So it's not like I've overspent. Um, I just haven't stuffed it yet. So I just need to remember to subtract 51 from the final total here as well. And I'll just put a check mark next to that because it is accounted for. Um, I just haven't you know, haven't stuffed it. So last up, I think I have just two equipment purchases here. So $19 plus 23, I think that's it, $42. So I'm for pulling $42 from equipment. There we go. Oh, there we go. So 20, 40, one and two. And remaining in equipment, I have 250 in the bank. I moved this to my high yield savings account because I just decided that it would be better suited there, earning interest as opposed to just sitting in the envelope. So that's 300, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So 313 in my equipment uh, category. All right, here we go. 313, put a check mark and a line and a check mark. Okay, so now actually I have to deduct the two numbers that I didn't actually have the cash in the envelopes for. So 637 minus 51, and then minus the 128 from groceries. And so actually sitting here in my cash tray, I should have $458. So let's give her a count, make sure that's what we have. So here we go, 152, 20, 40, 60, 83, 20, 40, 60, 70, 80, 90, 400, 10, 20, 30, 40, 5, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, and 58. So I have it. So $458. That is what I needed. So here is where I will just go into a brief explanation for what I do with this cash instead of returning it to the bank. And the short answer is that I um, just repurpose it and use it to um, supplement my next cash stuffing. So as you'll see, I'm, I'm either in the middle of the cutaway now or um, I'm just gonna start it. But basically what I do is I will now go in for my cash stuffing plan for the week and I do all of the same processes of figuring out how much I'm going to be pulling. So I go through and I look at what our planned stuffing was for each of the categories. I break all of those categories down um, and you know, write down the total amount that I'm pulling for each number for the week. And then I do my cash breakdown sheet, which is in my budget planner, if you didn't know that I sell in my Etsy shop. Once I do the cash breakdown and I figure out what or how many of each denomination I'm going to need for my next cash stuffing, I just go through with my little post-it pad and I figure out um, how many I'm going to need of each denomination minus the cash that I actually have left over. So in this case, you know, I 
however many hundreds I need, I need one less because I have a hundred dollar bill that's from my, you know, my weekly check-in that I unstuffed. So I'm just repurposing this cash. So essentially you are returning it to the bank because you're just not pulling out the total amount that you were going to need for the cash stuffing. Um, and so it all works itself out in that way. Um, you're not stuffing the total amount that you, or I'm sorry, you're not you're not pulling out from the bank the total amount that you had been planned to be planned to stuff for the next week because you had cash that you had to repurpose from your last cash stuffing. So that's what I do. That's the breakdown. And I do this every single week. Um, that is where the discipline element comes in because you do have to account for the cash that you spent from those um, envelopes, but you're just then turning that cash back into your cash stuffing. So um, it all works out. You're not pulling any extra from the bank. You're pulling less from the bank now because you have money in your hands that you're working with from your unstuffing. So that's how we do it around here in the simple household. Um, I hope that that was a good enough explanation for you. If you do have any other questions for me, please don't hesitate to ask me. Um, I mean, this this very explanation is a result of being asked several times kind of how I go about handling the money after the unstuffing portion of my weekly videos. So anyways, that's going to be it for me for today. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this week of content and I hope that you have enjoyed, um, you know, just a little bit of extra learning also from um, how we, you know, do our processes around here. So anyways, I hope that you guys have an absolutely fantastic weekend. Um, I hope that the weather is good for you. I know that my family on the East Coast is absolutely being annihilated by rain right now. And I know that that's can be really draining, like mentally draining to just have rain and overcast weather constantly. So I hope that it brightens up for all of you. I hope that you have a fa fabulous weekend with friends or family. Um, and I will be back here again with you on Monday with our cash stuffing. So have a good weekend, everyone. Bye. Mm -hmm.